As an emblem of Salisbury citizens' ability to mark their high days and holidays, the Salisbury giant is probably the most impressive. Now in retirement at Salisbury and South Wiltshire Museum, the giant, otherwise known as St Christopher, and his compatriot Hobnob were often seen being paraded in the streets during special occasions. Over the years, his dramatic appearances have been caught on camera by many of our amateur filmmakers, along with those responsible for taking the giant and Hobnob out onto the streets, people like former museum creator Peter Saunders. I first made his acquaintance when I came to Salisbury in 1970 as a very junior assistant curator. And one of my first jobs was to remove the cobwebs from the shoulder and around the head, as you can imagine, sort of keeping him spick and span is quite something. But over the years, I've moved him around, looked into his history, introduced him to scholars and students researching the tradition of the giant, right through really to 1977, which was his last outing. And it was in that year that we took him into the Market Square to celebrate the Queen's Silver Jubilee. And uh, I had somewhat dubious pleasure, it would be frowned on today, I think, for a museum curator to do this. But back in 1977, I uh, provided the legs, if I can put it that way, for Hobnob to cavort in front of the giant. The first record of him dates back to 1570. It was recorded that uh, one of the members of the Guild of Tailors, of whom he was the symbol, if you like, the pageant figure of the tailors, it was recorded that he was brought out and repaired, so he obviously existed earlier than that. This piece of glass is particularly interesting because it comes from the original guild hall of the Tailors' Guild, and it depicts the giant uh, here as St Christopher with his staff carrying the infant Jesus across a river. And this, of course, makes the connection between St Christopher and the giant. And this, of course, is why the Salisbury giant is known here as St Christopher. If you look around the country, there are obviously many traditions. Um, Helston, uh, Norwich, Chester, places like that, like Salisbury indeed, um, had their own traditions. Here in Salisbury, it was very much connected to those saints' days, um, John the Baptist, um, St George and so forth. And the giant would be accompanied by Morris dancers, three of them dressed as men, three of them dressed as women. The giant is one of those objects within the museum that I think it's rather like Marmite. You either love him or hate him. And I've seen children come round the corner there into this gallery and suddenly their eyes light up and they rush back and they say, Mummy, Mummy, there's a giant through here, isn't this wonderful? Other children, on the other hand, come round and then they cower behind their mother because they're afraid, gosh, there's a giant there. And certainly over the years, as I've come to study him, I think I've just begun to get under his skin. And perhaps that's what we ought to do, really, is just look to see how he's made underneath that skin. Well, the structure, as you see, is made of timber framework with cane. So that gives you the basic body of the giant. Then inside here, across his middle, you've got a very interesting device whereby the man could come up under and take it all the weight on his shoulders there. And traditionally in Salisbury, it was always a butcher who carried the giant, presumably because they were big, beefy men. And the other tradition, which I think is very much a Salisbury one, is that every time they processed far enough and got to a pub or an inn, they would stop there he would go in and have a jar of ale, and another one would take over. Now you see there's a little, almost sort of face piece here of linen uh, or muslin, where you could just, just about see out through. And rising up above, you've got very thin sort of strings here, which originally would have been outside to enable the whifflers and other helpers to just steady the giant, so that as he was going along, he would go along in a straight line rather than fall over. It's known, for example, in 1911 that that wasn't very successful and going down Fishton Street, the wind did actually topple him over. How much of him is original? That's a very good question because the straight answer is we don't know. The head is probably the earliest part of him, carved from solid block of wood. The other early part of the giant will be the sword, which is carried in the baldric. 
The rest of him dates really from about the 1850s onwards, and there are records of numerous restorations right through to the day, in fact, when he came into the museum. Well, my friend uh, Hobnob here um, is obviously a hobby horse. Um, his role, really, was to make way for the giant. As the giant was going along in a procession down the streets of Salisbury, he would snap, and uh, if you look closely, you can see that the man uh, inside the uh, hobnob here would be manipulating the jaws of the hobnob as he ran along, snapping away, uh, frightening the little boys to make, make way for the giant. But of course, remember, he was also accompanied by the whifflers carrying the giant sword and the mace, which themselves are rather vicious weapons, and although used in part, I think, to support the giant, were nevertheless uh, used to keep the public away from the giant. So the, the hobnob really shared that duty with the whifflers. And he's really a character, a really nice character, I think, and much loved um, in Salisbury. Even his hair is actually made from original um, horse hair uh, and leather, of course. When you get in, you can come up underneath and your head is protected by the, the netting and uh, the feet um, that just appear out of the bottom were, in 1977 at least, my own feet. It was a little bit claustrophobic. One was never quite sure um, where the next rotten apple or egg was going to come flying from. But I'm pleased to say that at least the people of Salisbury in 1977 uh, were fairly well behaved. But thinking back as to what it must have been like in medieval times when uh, people had much less respect, I think, one can imagine returning home at the end of the day, mud splattered, really exhausted. It's not that he's so heavy to carry, it's just that you've got to be the centre of fun and attention. And it is a very serious duty, you know, making way for Salisbury's very own giant.